Hello friends, I'm making this video as I'm heading to work this morning just to answer the question of a, of a subscriber who was kind enough to ask, <laughs> and so I'm kind enough to try to answer. Uh, he's, he's watched my my guitar videos on my YouTube channel for a long time, and he just asked who are my main influences. When I go to play guitar, am I trying to emulate the style of any particular person? And I'm sure he's probably heard little elements of stuff that sound familiar to him. And you know, first of all, I'll say this, I don't consider myself much of a guitar player. Um, I super enjoy it. It's a super excellent way for me to blow off steam. There was, however, a time that I was pretty good. I mean, I was playing a lot. It's back in my 20s. And I played in multiple bands. I played different styles of music. You know, it was the 80s and there was a lot of guitar centric music. And so probably a lot of what you hear when I'm just jamming, because 90% of what's on my channel is just me playing a backing track or something or setting a loop and, and then just jamming over blues or something like that. I apologize. I realize I probably play five times more in my videos than I should. I probably indulge more than I should. I start these jams because I'm, I'm just wanting to share the tone of the guitar and options of how it could sound different pickups and you know run, it, run some uh, distortion through it or some overdrive. So I'm trying to do my best to highlight the guitar. I'm not trying to highlight my playing because I, I don't think I'm, I haven't had time to be good in a long time. And uh, you know, I did my band this spring, which became quickly more than I could handle. and. Uh, but it was fun. It was fun going out and trying to play accurate music again and learn learn the riffs and playing different keys and stuff. But to, on to answering this question, who were my influences, still are my influences, Where what comes out in my playing? And I'll say if you listen to any of my little jams, uh, my little improvised stuff, you're going to hear probably some dicky bits. <laughs> you're going to hear Mark Knopfler. You're going to hear probably Don Felder, maybe Ann Joe Walsh. Uh, Gary Rosington from Skinner is probably a big influence. Um, I look back, I, you know, I, honestly, Alex Lifeson from Rush was who I really wanted to be like. And during the 80s, I worked really hard but, uh, to uh, to get Rush's music. So I, I always wanted to put together a Rush tribute band or something. And of course, finding a singer and a drummer that can handle it. I could find bass players, and, and I thought I could do a lot of the Lifeson stuff. So. But, but you're not going to hear probably much of that in my playing other than, uh, you know, maybe some phrasing or something that Alex Lyston might do. But those are probably the guitar players. Oh, Eric Clapton, hard for me to, I can't leave Eric out, or Billy Gibbons from, uh, you, know, you know, from ZZ. Uh, and, you know, honestly, maybe all the Skinner players. Uh, I said Gary Rosington, but... I'm a big fan of Steve Gaines, you know, the guitar player that only did two records with him, The Street Survivors and um, the One More From The Road. Uh, I just love listening to that guy play. I'd just give anything if he, if Skinner could have not had the crash and see what would have happened with Steve Gaines and how he, what he still would have brought. Because I thought it was fascinating what he did on that uh, Street Survivors record. He, he was just awesome. But you know, uh, Alan Collins, Ed King, how many times have I played uh, Swamp Music or Sweet Home Alabama or um, you know the, the different things that bow to Curtis Lowe, you know, the stuff that you hear Ed King riffing on. I, I love that kind of playing. Um, thinking back to you, you know what was what was influencing me back when I probably grew more as a guitar player was was 80s pop. And you still hear some melodic type stuff. And if you ever listen to the solo for Everybody Wants to Rule the World, you're going to hear a little stuff like that. Like, what's his name? Roland Orzabal, I think was his name. Uh, I really dug that kind of music for a while. And um, so there's bits of that in there. There's, you know, as much as I can try to do it, there's some Jeff Beck, there's some Jimi Hendrix. Uh, there's some Jimmy Page, definitely, because I, I did... Uh, in various bands I've played, I've done Stairway Live, uh, and, and I think do a pretty good job of that, and Black Dog, and, uh, you know, gee whiz, what else do we, we used to do? Jamaica, um, Houses of the Holy. I've performed a bunch of, uh, of Zeppelin music. Not, not a tremendous amount, but probably Mark Knopfler. And Don Felder, honestly, uh, and so I'm, I'm, not, I'm also in case my old guitar player, old guitar teacher, ever sees this, 
Uh, he was a huge influence. A guy named David Tedford. Dave Tedford, who uh, I guess he's still out there playing. Uh, a good, really great player. When I was at Mars Hill University, David was the first to help me understand how uh, pentatonic scales overlap. I was playing major scales. I knew what a blues scale was just because I played it, not because I knew it was called a blues scale or a minor pentatonic or anything like that, but David would show me how, hey, this blues thing you're playing here, it works for country. If you slide it back three frets, the same pattern. And so then I said, well, whoa, well, well there's really just only a few changes. Well, what happens if I overlap these? And I remember I took a, a I made me a, a six lines uh, and drew, drew the pentatonic scale on it, the blues pentatonic. And, and I did it like in a in a blue little, uh, what do you call these little transparent markers, highlighters. I put a blue dot where every, on the neck, say I, say I picked a, a scale like a, a, a minor pentatonic. And I put every dot on the neck of the guitar on a, a, a drawing of, of the strings and the frets. And I put a, like a blue dot everywhere I knew the blues pentatonic, uh, the minor pentatonic for A was. And then I had a pink highlighter, and I put it everywhere there was a major note, all the whole neck of the guitar, and then there were places where they overlapped, right? Well, where the pink and the and, and the blue overlapped, it made a purple dot. And the thing I realized in my mind is, hey, that purple dot is very safe. That's the note you want to stop on. That note's going to work over over either one of these scales. So if I want to mix these scales, they're particularly for playing blues which is what you hear a lot on my channels, me just riffing all the old weird blue stuff that I'm making up. I'm, I'm using that knowledge that Dave gave me back there in college, um, knowledge from college. And uh, in my mind, I'm seeing that chart where the blue notes are and where the pink notes are, and more particularly where the purple notes are. That is at least 90% of what you're hearing on my channel. Just, just uh, eagles, Skinnered, <laughs> Clapton, Dire Straits, 80s Pop, uh, ZZ, Clapton, Page, and and um, and just wandering around on the notes that I that I pretty much know work now. From time to time, that this is the the one thing you get with my channel you probably don't get with others. You get to see me make mistakes. I do not cut out my mistakes I think it's kind of funny and, and, and so you'll hear me here you'll hear me hit a sour note once in a while well, I, what I'm trying to do is get a little bit outside of my box and so now and again you'll see me doing some extensions and stuff and I'll land on a, a sorry note and the, the cool thing about that is when you play a when you play a sick note a bad note you're always one half uh, you're always one fret away from something that'll work I'll, usually it's there's there's at least several notes that are might be better than the one that I pick but if you play a note that's outside totally outside it, it's probably chromatic type thing just back it off or slide it up one so you'll you'll see me do that in my videos and I do not try to cut out any I, I you get warts and all on my channel <laughs> so again my apologies for this is kind of a long video but hey it's fun to talk as I'm riding to work uh, what you get on my channel is is just very honest. I'm not cutting out any. The only time I do cuts, honestly, is I sit there and go, "Good grief, I'm I, I, I'm going on and on and on." And and that's just the nature of how I practice. Uh, the thing I like to do is make a loop or or get a backing track, ask Alexa to play me a backing track, and um, I, I try to pick different keys so I don't get stuck in a rut. I might play 30 minutes in B flat, you know, which I'm never going to play in B flat mode or E flat. Uh, but still, it's good for me to go through that. You know, I tend to want to play in C and D and A and E and G, just like any other guitar player. But I force myself to play in B or, like I say, play in, play in D flat or something, just just so I keep my mind from, from being stuck on those same patterns. Now, a lot of times my go-to thing is key of A or key of C or key of G when you're watching my videos. Apologies for that. I know it gets kind of boring. But but here again, I'm trying to showcase the guitars most of the time and the uh, or the effects I'm using or backing tracks, you know, if I'm doing a band in a box review or something like that. So that's the answer, long answer to that question. And that's probably mostly what you're hearing. 
uh, I can't think. I mean, I used to like really try to do like Richie Blackmore, people like that. It's some sometimes way far beyond me. Eric Johnson's a big hero of mine. And you know, I could I got to where I could play Cliffs at Dover pretty decent at one point, but I've never honestly become a uh, you know a, a really modal shredder like he is, and I've never really mastered all of the arpeggios I probably should have as far as like the Hendrix influence. Now and again, you'll hear me throw a little double stop and stuff in there. Really wish I could be a master of that. There's there's going to come a time in my life when I have to slow down probably. Uh, I, I need to be thinking about that now, actually, but, but there'll come a time when I can slow down again and learn some more, and maybe the guitar playing will be better. But thanks for your patience. Thanks for watching the videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like. Hopefully that's answered this person's question, and I'll have a video. If anybody asks that again, I'll be able to answer. Thanks, folks. Have a great day.